Let's be radically honest. There's a reason why you decided to become the professional or entrepreneur that you are today. Is it safe to say that it wasn't to be away from those you love or sacrifice yourself and your health while doing it? What if you could create the life and business of your dreams without working harder? What if stress and overwhelm were a thing of your past? Entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce is here to guide you through letting go of comparison and imposter syndrome so that you can stop making a living and start creating your epic life. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Yes, I am your host and my name is Ranchelle. Um, I want to thank the listener who messaged me and she said, you know, you, it sounds like you're speaking my language. You know, I'm really connecting with your message about sacrificing stuff. And I said, yes, because that was my life. <laughs> that was my story. So thank you. I'm glad that I'm sorry. That's your story. And uh, that was my story. Uh, truly, right. When I had all the curse franchises, I did all the right things, right. I worked really hard. Um, you know, was moving towards this uh, idea of what I thought success would uh, was and got there and then was super disappointed that I had sacrificed so much um, to create a business and I had no life. I had a business. I had a life. In fact, I joke around a lot and said, yes, I was the proud owner of eight jobs. Well, actually eight Curves franchises. And there was like several jobs that I was doing within that. And so perhaps maybe you can resonate with my story. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it? How when we start a business, at least for me, I thought when I started my business, it was going to be this epic life. And it was supposed to be, oh, so much fun. And I was just going to be this, you know, um, Susie Happy Homemaker. Uh, that was the words we used back then when I'm like, when my babies were babies. And it wasn't quite like that. And it wasn't like that at all, right? <laughs> so I, I talk about it lots because had someone um, told me, I still would have made the same decision. I love owning my business. Um, and, uh, and it would have been nice to know just a little bit more of the things that I needed to know. And I'm not talking about business strategy, although uh, that is important. Um, you know, I really spend time with my clients and spend time, uh, lots of time learning more and more and more about how our mind works, uh, actually how the brain works and how it's, re how it's wired. Then what I believe is necessary to rewire the brain. And so in my practice, in my business, my coaching practice, I take this approach of both a science perspective and a spiritual perspective. I believe in a higher power. And that could be God, that could be divine, that could be divine intelligence, Buddha, Allah, creator. Let me see what else have I heard. Whatever works for you. I think the approach both ways is important. And so today, when we talk about how to move that mountain of fear, we're really, that's really what we're going to talk about is that peace. And perhaps maybe you can relate to that because fear for some people, fear means false evidence appearing real. And for others, fear is a deep feeling that's very hard to move through. I actually believe that fear is also a belief. Um, and so I know that not everyone thinks that or feels that way. I know that fear can stop you from trying new things. It certainly has for me or did, has uh, in the past for me, it can still creep up and stop me from doing new things. Fear can stop uh, you from exploring different ways. Fear can be debilitating, causing procrastination and self-sabotage. And that uh, I can also relate to. But have you ever been a, uh, known or pardon me, asked why? Why are you afraid of falling? Did you know we're only born with two fears? We're born with the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. Why are we afraid of success? Um, what's the fear behind taking risks? But what if it didn't matter? Uh, what if it didn't matter why? Although I'm going to talk about why, <laughs> but what if you could understand what to do to move your mountain of fear instead? And so imagine a life where you have clarity because clarity is important uh, so that you could feel the fear and do it anyway. Or in our case, see the fear for what it is and move the, that mountain out of your way. So that's what we're going to talk about. And I'm going to start with a little bit of science. So a little bit of science piece of it is first and foremost is uh, the brain is a goal achieving machine. And so if you've been listening to me, you have heard this over and over again. And I really believe that we can't say this too much, that the brain is a goal achieving machine. It's like this giant Google search engine. So when you start uh, thinking about doing something, 
or you start asking questions like, why is this happening to me? Or how am I to do this? Your brain does what it's, what it's designed to do. It's wired to answer questions. Have you ever had someone ask you a question like, mm, how are you? And try not to answer you. It's very difficult to not answer the question. My favorite example though is, so where I shop, uh, there is the, uh, you can do the, um, oh, now I'm having a brain fart, air miles card. Right? So when I go in and I have, uh, I, the lovely clerk says to me, do you have air miles? Rather than just say no, which is a, a complete sentence, here's what I say. Well, I do have air miles, but it's not with me. I left it at home. And then I laugh because do you really think they care? <laughs> do you think they care that A, I have air miles? They're just like, they're just, it's like, dude, I'm just doing my job, right? And so, or B, that I left it wherever I left it. No, but why do I feel compelled to answer that way? Because my brain, like your brain, is wired, right? The, this way, so it answers questions and answers uh, the question as much as it possibly can, right? So it's interesting how our brains work. So one of the things we talk about is the brain being on the goal achieving machine, right? When a question is asked, one feels compelled to answer it. So that's one, one piece of it, right? And I, I will tie this into fear here in a moment. The second piece for you to, uh, to make sure that you understand, mm, make sure that's pretty forceful, that I invite you <laughs> to understand is this, um, your brain is wired for survival. It's actually not wired to thrive. Now, I do believe that we are uh, evolving as a species where that may eventually not be the case. But at this point in time, your brain is wired for survival. So what do I mean by that? So imagine you are, hmm, let me see, you live in a cave, right? And you're carrying a club and you have fur for clothes. Um, you have no shoes because you're a cave person. So I won't even say gender, you're a cave person. And you come out of the cave and you start looking for all the things that could go wrong. Like, oh, there's a snake over there in the grass. Oh, that looks like there's a storm coming over here. Ooh, someone left this rock over here for me to trip on. Oh, it looks like those are tiger prints. Oh, it looks like this is over here. And uh, it looks like, and your, your brain just starts to look for all of the ways that you could die. Brains actually haven't changed much since then. So what happens when you open your eyes, right? And you start asking yourself questions. Uh, you start thinking you're wired for survival you're not wired to thrive. So you start thinking about your day. And if you have a busy day, you might be in overwhelm. And you start thinking about all the things that are standing in your way of you and your goal or you and your desires. And again, you're wired that way. It's not your fault. I think when I realized that my, the point in time, there's a couple of kind of game changers for me. One of them was when I realized that it wasn't my fault, meaning I'm a problem solver by nature. Most of us are based on the information that I gave you. So I'm a problem solver by nature. Well, I'm in this world of energy work. I'm in the world of law of attraction. And I kept on thinking to myself, I just can't get my shit together. I just can't figure this stuff out. I mean, I have a sense of it. I understand it. I can comprehend it, but it's just not working out the way that I want it to. Well, when I realized, when I had the information that, that came to me was because my brain is wired for uh, survival and not to thrive, that changed the way that I looked at myself. It changed the way that I viewed what I was experiencing. And that truly was a game changer for me, right? Because I uh, kept on thinking that there must be something seriously wrong with me. I mean, I'm a fairly intelligent woman. So why can't I get my shit together? <laughs> why can't I figure this out? That would be why. Now that I know that, now that I know that my brain is a massive search engine, number one, and it's looking for ways and means to protect me. All, all my brain wants to do is make sure that I'm safe and secure. So guess what? When you um, have a life, I was going to say when you own a business, but that's not 
just strictly for businesses uh, and business owners and professionals. When you have a life, there's risk, there's unknown. The moment you go into the unknown, your brain is on high alert. Think about if you drive to work uh, and when you're driving to work, there's probably one way, maybe two ways you drive to work every single day. You are a creature of habit. You're driving to work and you, of course, have left just enough time, if you're me, <laughs> you've just left just enough time to arrive on time, knowing where you're going. And all of a sudden, you see that there's an obstacle in the way. There's construction. Oh, my goodness, right? There's construction everywhere where I live here, right? It's uh, summertime. There's construction. And a little part of you will start to go, oh, shit. Okay, now what? Now, if you are in an area that you're familiar with, it won't feel so risky. It won't, you won't necessarily go into hyper uh, fear, right? However, if you don't know where you're going, you might panic a little bit. You might have this evidence, this false evidence appearing real, right? You might for a moment, forget that you have access to Google Maps or iMaps, right? You might start to panic because you realize that you didn't leave enough time. That's because your brain is wired this way. So again, we go to, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not thinking the wrong way. You're thinking the way that you were designed. So how cool is that to know that? That you know that this is the way that your brain is wired. So guess what? You can also rewire your brain in a different way. You, you do have the power, um, the, we have the intelligence, and I'm going to share with you kind of how to do that today. Share, you have the intelligence to create a new neural pathway, to create new, new neural networks, to rewire your brain. So when we think about fear and, uh, you know, is it false evidence appearing real for you? Or is it like, nope. This is like, I'm scared. I have fear about this thing. It's an unknown thing. What if, right? What if I do this wrong? What if I make a mistake? How am I going to do this, right? So we have um, access to what I refer to as our primal brain, right? Our limbic system. We also have access to our prefrontal cortex. I call that my yes brain. My yes brain is like, yes, let's do this. Yes, we can do this. Yes, let's move forward. Yes, let's have fun, right? My primal brain is like, are you kidding me? No, wait, do you know, do you know the risk across that bridge? Do you know there might be more bigger tigers over there? there it's, it's a trap, right? So what we want to do is speak more to the yes part of your brain and let the limbic part of the brain relax, right? How do you do that? Well, the first uh, piece of that is to ask different, I'm actually going to use the word better, to ask different or better questions. Now I'm talking better in terms of discernment, not right or wrong. And I think it's important that I discern that because I don't believe there's any wrong way to do things. I believe there's different ways. And I believe that each way will take you where you're, where you're meant to go. Uh, one may might be a little bit longer of a trip. One might be a little bit straighter but it doesn't really matter. Either way, you're going to get where you want to go. Either way, you're going to get, get there. How do you engage the yes brain? Ask different questions. Okay, so what kinds of questions should we ask? Here's probably what you're asking. Why is this happening to me? How do I create a marketing funnel? How do I get more clients, right? How do I do this? Why, why or how? When you ask that question, because your brain is a goal achieving machine, guess what it does? It looks for answers. It searches in your brain, in your massive uh, search engine, goes back into your past and gives you all the ways, uh, reasons why or how. Now, if you're asking something you've never done, how do I create a marketing funnel? And you've never done a marketing funnel, you're gonna draw a blank. <laughs> And your brain doesn't like blank and it starts to make shit up. It's like, oh no, I don't know how to do this. I must be an idiot. Everyone else seems to be doing this, right? If you have built a marketing funnel um, in the past and it didn't go over very well, 
your brain is going to tell you that you're an idiot. You can't figure this stuff out. Facebook algorithm is going to screw this up anyhow. Why bother? Right? So what ends up happening is you start go, you go back to your past and you immediately start to see all the ways and means and the reasons why you can't do the thing. All right, I'm going to share with you different questions to ask after the break. So let's go into our break. First of all, thank you so much for joining me here on Inspired Choices Network. My name is Ranchelle, and you are here with Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. And again, my name is Ranchal. Thank you so much for joining Ignite Your Success with Ranchal. Before we went to the break, I talked a little bit about the mountain of fear and uh, really brought some science into it, explaining to you how your brain is wired and the fact that your brain is a goal achieving machine and it's wired for survival and not to thrive. So part of the way we move uh, that mountain out of fear is actually to ask different questions. You really wanna stop asking questions like how or why, because your brain will go back into the search engine and tell you all the reasons why, uh, or all the reasons how you can or cannot do something. Especially if you've done something or trying to do something, pardon me, you've never done. Your brain's gonna go into a little bit of overwhelm. And then it'll actually will reach back into your past and share with you all the risks that you've taken and all the times that you've failed. So uh, before we went to break, I said, ask different questions, right? Uh, questions that will allow your brain to be able to answer it. So here is a great example of different questions. So the first question that I ask myself is, uh, what else is possible, right? So I'm wanting doing this thing. So what else is possible? What's the truth in this, right? How can I be open to learning this? What are some of the limiting beliefs that are preventing me? What are some of the things I need to understand or learn? What are some of the unlimited beliefs that I need to, to, to be open to? Like that's a series. I know I rapid fire sent some to you, but see the difference in how do I do this or why is this happening to what's the truth in this? That's another way of asking why. Why is this happening? What is the truth in this? Well, the truth is, Ranchal, right, that you're afraid of making a mistake. Well, the truth is, Ranchal, that you procrastinated and now you're, you're experiencing a little bit of humility. Well, the truth is, and that question, I love that question, right? Another question that I love is, what am I resisting being, doing, or having? So what am I resisting being, doing, or having? That question opens up because I start to access, yes, my own brain, now I'm going to bring a little bit of spirituality into it. When you ask questions like that, you're also accessing what I would refer to in this particular instance as the formless substance 
or accessing what I also would refer to as my higher power, right? Uh, the questions will be answered. Now, sometimes it takes a bit of time. A little bit of patience is required because you're not asking your massive search engine, but you're asking open-ended questions. You're asking your reticular activating system, your RAS in your brain to activate. Because you're asking these kinds of questions and your RAS starts to activate this, this process takes a bit of time. Now, how much time will really depend on how open you are. I've had answers within 10 minutes. I've had answers within 10 hours and I've had answers within 10 days, right? I don't think there's any like right way or wrong way to have this happen, right? So one of the, the components of moving this mountain of fear is to is to start to ask the questions that you're the, that you're looking for answers in this in this different capacity. Now, as I said, it's your RAS kicks in, and from a spiritual perspective, that also happens. When you ask about your limiting beliefs that might be in your way, you will be amazed at some of the things that come up, right? And for me, what I have what I've kind of un, um, unpacked, discovered, experienced, is that the more work that I do in this realm, the more insidious my limiting beliefs are, right? The more difficult, mm, yeah, I'll use that word. The more difficult it is to unpack that because the limiting beliefs are fairly insidious in nature. So what do I mean? They're, they can be fairly hidden. I mean, there's some basic ones. For example, my I'm not enough. Uh, that one's been present for a very long time. And I, I easily recognize that one. But other ones I don't recognize uh, as quickly. How will you know if you're facing a limiting belief? You will know because the outcome that you're desiring isn't the outcome that you want, right? So when you create anything uh, from the space of a limiting belief, you create more from the limiting belief perspective. So usually more of what you don't want than what you do want. So it can become really simple um, in nature. Now, does that mean you're doing anything wrong? No, it just means that you haven't uncovered what that limiting belief is or how it's affecting you, right? So specifically, I'm talking about fear, right? Um, and I do really love the acronym, you know, false evidence appearing real. Because lots of times when we're facing fear, it's the concern of the unknown. It's the, uh, I'm not sure what the outcome will be or a fear of failing. Let's use that as an example, right? And the reason why we have this fear of failing is because Somewhere along the way, along the path of our experience, we gave the meaning of fear a negative meaning. It something happened to us when we made an, when we made a mistake. So because that happened, our brain why is wired to remember that, right? Uh, so even if you don't have a memory of it, your body remembers, you have a, a neural network, a neural connection to the memory of the thing. So what happens is when you're facing something that seems a little bit unknown, your body starts to respond in this way, right? So your body responds in this, this space of, I don't want to make a mistake, or I have this fear of failing. And it could be something really simple, like you tried something when you were a child, um, it didn't work, and you uh, experienced maybe someone laughing at you or bullying you, right? Um, it's usually a some sort of situation like that, right? So part of what we can do now is we can look at that situation with a new lens. We can look at it through the eyes of the adult versus the eyes of the child. So one of the pieces of this, so again, this, we're talking about fear, this piece of this is recognizing, you know, what it might be linked to, the story it might be linked to, and then looking at it and asking yourself, like, what is the truth in this, right? What is, what else is possible? What limiting belief do I have? So let me share, I'll share a story with you. Um, when I was growing up, 
I really didn't like to be teased, you know, and as an adult, uh, same thing. I didn't really like to be teased. And for the, for the longest time, I thought it was because when I was growing up, you weren't allowed to tease. So I have, I have a younger sister. We weren't allowed to tease each other. And I thought maybe, you know, it had something to do with when I was bullied as a child or maybe something to do with my parents, but teasing, uh, not allowed. So I've gone through all of my life up until like, this is a brand new story three weeks ago, right? And I was in a coaching session and I coach a morning mindset group. Every morning we get together and I was sharing something about um, the feeling, the sense of, of humiliation. And I had this memory of when I was in grade two of uh, going from gymnastics or gym, I think it was, right? Getting ready in the change room, the girls change room, because it was gym was over gymnastics and it was during gymnastics so I don't know if it's gym or gymnastics and it was uh it was over and I was wearing tights and a skirt and I forgot to put my skirt back on so I'm in grade two I come out of the washroom and there's a young boy I actually know who it is and, and I won't say his name because I mean like right <laughs> so this young boy starts pointing at me and laughing at me and, um, and pointing that I don't have pants on. And so this memory comes flooding in while I'm coaching. And I just, it was like, I just paused. I asked for the grace, right? So that I could just move through this moment. And so I realized that I didn't like to be teased because being teased for me wasn't, wasn't about being teased, but it was this memory of the humiliation I felt standing in front of my grade two class with no pants on, right? So this awareness came because I was experiencing something. Uh, I was afraid to make a mistake in something. I was procrastinating on something. And I went, what's the truth in this? Like, show me what the limiting belief is so I can move this mountain of fear. And I was graced with this trigger, graced with this memory at that time. So as I'm processing this in front of um, a group of incredibly supportive clients, I realized that like, this is, this is the limiting belief, this afraid to make a mistake because someone's going to point their fingers and laugh at me afraid to be teased because someone's going to point their fingers and laugh at me afraid to be wrong which is different than a mistake in my head uh because if i'm wrong people are going to point their fingers and laugh at me the other piece of that was and this is uh was so amazing is i'm not really a fan of skirts right could never figure out my mom loves skirts like right and dresses my sisters both they just love it and I never have and I you know thought well it you know it's because I made up a whole bunch of excuses because I'm like six feet tall and you know I'm broad shouldered and I don't have like curves like my sisters do and I had a, had a great story I had a great meaning that I gave it and then I realized I don't wear skirts because I had this experience of someone pointing at me and laughing at me because I forgot to put my skirt on this is the power of asking the question of what else is possible or what's the truth in this or show me show me this limit show me the limiting belief that's keeping me and holding me back because I know what to do right I have a task I have a, a list of things to do I know I know that if I do this the result will be this then why am I not doing the thing right and the, and the challenge is is when we when we know we're to be doing something we immediately go to action what should i do differently well i'm going to make a better what list a list is a list i'm going to do a better have better time management strategy right but that's not the challenge the challenge isn't the doing the challenge is the belief the thought the emotion all of those things influence the doing your belief your thoughts around it and your emotion are the things that influence your doing. So I'm so passionate about what I, what I do because I spent, I don't know, 20 some years working on strategy and strategy is important. I like, I'm the first one that will say, okay, great. Now that you have the mindset piece, now we can work on strategy. So strategy is important, 
Um, but before that is this piece that I'm talking about. And all of this is tied to moving your mountain of fear. I'm going to share a little bit more about that uh, as we head into our second break. Once again, thank you for joining me here on Inspired Choices Network. My name is Ranchelle, and you are with me on Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchel Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchel Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Ranchelle, and you are on Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle here at Inspired Choices Network. Now, I love what I do. Sometimes I get, I forget, I forget what, what segment I'm on. I'll, I'll forget like what break we're on. <laughs> so thank goodness I have this amazing team behind me. They keep me on the straight and arrow. Uh, I appreciate all of you uh, here at Inspired Choices Network. For those of you who are listening live or you are listening uh, afterwards, before we went to break, um, the very first part I talked about, your brain is a goal achieving machine. Your brain's wired, uh, of course, to survive and not to thrive. I gave you some examples of what that looks like. When we want to move the mountain of fear, the first thing we need to do is actually, uh, one of the first things, pardon me, is to ask different questions. So if you're asking why questions or asking, how do I do this thing? You won't be able to uh, find the answer you're seeking for. You will find the answer. And the answer will go back into your past or will uh, and share with you all the reasons why you can't do something. It's usually because we suck, right? It doesn't say, you can't do this, Ranchelle, because you're brilliant and you're amazing and you just can't do it because. No, no, it goes into all my childhood stories. Uh, it goes into all the things that I will give meaning to it. And then I get caught up and I know that other people get caught up in this loop, right? This, uh, this loop. I also talked a little bit about we always go into action, right? And really what we need to do is we need to focus on the belief behind the action. There's a belief, there's a thought, there's an emotion, and then there's an action. Now, sometimes that action can be procrastination um, or inaction. And, um, and those two can feel different for different people. So, you know, think about that for yourself. Is an inaction different for you than procrastination? Some of you will be the same thing. Uh, sometimes those, that action is self-sabotage, right? Doing the things that we know we're not supposed to do. Like hmm, we decide on Monday that we're going to release weight. I don't want to lose weight because I always find it, right? So we want to release weight. And then by Wednesday, we're having a glass of wine and a chocolate cake, and not a piece of cake. We're having a chocolate cake. <laughs> so this, And this happens because we uh, maybe went into action uh, and we didn't understand the belief behind that. That's that action in this particular instance is self-sabotage. So the strength of you moving through your mountain of fear will um, come from the strength of your new questions. And I gave some examples of some fairly like broad questions, but I'm going to share with you some other more specific questions, uh, questions that I've heard my clients uh, ask, and we've re um, repositioned the questions, uh, questions myself that I maybe I've asked, right? 
So for example, disempowering questions, ooh, a disempowering question, how do we know it's disempowering? You'll actually feel kind of bad, right? When you, when you think about the answer, right? When you ask an empowering question, it's like this aha moment. It's just like, oh, holy shit, I just figured this out, right? So here are some examples of disempowering questions. Um, and I've got them written down so that I wouldn't, I wouldn't forget them. So why can't I lose weight? Um, why won't I allow this in my life? Why am I holding myself back? How do I sell this program? Where can I find people to buy? Why won't my programs sell? Why can't I attract clients? Okay. Why am I broke? Why am I overweight? Why am I lonely? Why am I alone? So if you ask yourself those disempowering questions, you will receive a disempowering answer, right? And again, your brain is designed to answer those questions. So it's going to go into your past. Remember brain, uh, super search, search engine. It's like Google on steroids. Other ways you can find the truth, move your mountain of fear. Because moving your mountain of fear is really about you uh, finding your truth. And your truth is going to be different than my truth. Right. And I think that's so, I, so important. I share that a lot about your definition of success will be different than my definition. Your truth is going to be different than my truth. Your journey is different than my journey. It's meant to be. That would be so boring if we just all had the same, the same life. Right. So what are some um, less uh, disempowering? Mm, no. What are some empowering questions? You'll notice when we're together, I, always, I, I pause when I ask questions. I think that words are really important. I think the energy of a word is important. And uh, one of, I guess, my awarenesses as a coach, when I've been coached, because I've, uh, I am a coach and I have coaches. What I've noticed is how, uh, my, how I show up is I often blame myself first for something. I often look at all the ways that I screw up. And so when I realized for me that there's nothing wrong with me, that I don't need to align into anything or vibrate at a certain level, I am who I am and I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be and where I'm at is perfect. And my life is unfolding perfectly for me, imperfectly perfect. Um, I moved into more ease and flow. Now, does that mean I don't have bad days and shit doesn't happen? I can no, no. It just it doesn't mean that at all. What it does mean, though, and this is tied to our fear, is the meaning that we give things. So when I'm having a bad moment or day uh, and I'm experiencing a situation, I'll have a bad day or a moment if the meaning that I give that is uh, a disempowering meaning. Or I can ask more empowering questions, which is what, where we started with this. And I can give the experience a different meaning. That is very empowering because I move from victimhood to being one, being victorious, right? I move into more of an, empower, an empowered state. Although that word, I think sometimes can be overused in the world of coaching and energy. Um, it truly is an amazing word. So what are, what's a different way to, uh, to ask a question like, right? How do I sell this program? Right? You can ask yourself, what is the truth in my resistance to selling? That's a bit different, isn't it? How do I sell the program? We all know how to sell. You have a conversation. Business is easy. Marketing, sales, operation. So if you're not doing marketing, if you're not doing sales, it's not about you selling your program. It's like, what are you resisting in selling the program? What's the thought process behind selling? What do you think of salespeople? Like, right, what's your belief around salespeople? What's your belief about sales? Like, that'll tell you why, uh, how you sell stuff. Because you're moving into a limiting belief. You're moving into the reason or the meaning you're giving that, right? When I'm um, in a room and I will say to people, who loves to sell? There are so few of us that do this, <laughs> right? Because we have this meaning that we've given sales or, or, or uh, selling or salespeople. Right? Sales is just a conversation. 
right? And, and part of the reason why we give the meaning is there's a, there's a lot of hype out there about there's a right way to sell and there's a wrong way to sell, right? I know my industry has kind of, I talk about this lots. So my industry has kind of bastardized this. Sales is really simple, right? Um, and it's really about having a conversation with people who, right, who you connect with and sharing your passion with people. Um, I mean, that's what we'll talk about next week is sales. That'll be a great topic. Let's go back to, I'm on track. Let's go back to this whole process of asking this question. So the question was, right, uh, how do I sell this program? Uh, a more empowering question is, what am I resisting in selling this program? What do I believe about sales? What is the truth in the fact that I'm not able to sell this program? What is the truth? Your truth, the truth will come out, right? And the limiting beliefs will come out. What about why can't I lose weight? How about asking a question like, um, other than losing weight, right? What would empower me to transform my body? Other than losing weight, right? Because we give a meaning to being overweight or we be, a, meaning to be, a, a meaning is given to being underweight or a meaning is given if we start a diet on Monday and we're not on the diet on Thursday. We give a lot of meaning to a lot of things, right? And it's usually, again, we go back into, well, why can't I do this? Well, because I suck. I'm not good at diets, right? Um, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. I don't have the willpower. I hear that all the time. I don't have the willpower to do, to do that, right? What if you didn't need willpower? What if that was just a made up statement? What if willpower didn't exist? Other than willpower, what do you need to lose weight? Aren't these great questions? When we're facing our fears, when we're looking at this false evidence appearing real, and we want to move this mountain, we'll need to like show up differently. One of my favorite questions that I ask myself and my clients is who do I need to be? Who do I need to be in order to be courageous and overcome my fear of rejection in a sales conversation? Isn't that a little bit different than why can't I sell my program? It, set thing, it sets things up a little bit differently because you become more empowered to make decisions for yourself and your business. You can, I often talk about, you know, it's not really for me, at least my experiences, it wasn't like a busting through a fear per se, although sometimes it feels like that fear blows up. True. Like, but there, it's more of a, like, I'm in awareness of this thing is happening. I'm radically honest with myself. I ask different questions so that I can view this situation, this experience, because I don't believe there's problems. I can view this situation with this new way of thinking. And when I ask different questions, I will, the answer will unfold. Now, the key after this awareness is to take action. So part of the false evidence appearing real and why it keeps on coming back is you might not be taking action. The fear might be more insidious than you thought. You might not have gotten down to the core belief. Like there's a lot of reasons and none of them have to do with you suck. None of them have to do with that at all, right? So as you start asking different questions, you start kind of peeling the, the layers away of your limiting beliefs. It allows you to take different action. It allows you to have a new belief, a new thought, a new emotion, and therefore you can take a different action. And when you take a different action, you have a different result, which gives you evidence for this belief. So I'm going to go to break here um, in a moment, but I want to share another, I guess, statement. Um, and I talk about this lots. A belief is just a decision with evidence. A belief is just a decision with evidence. So when you ask yourself why, and I'm going to use weight because I, like, I think a lot of people can relate to this. Why can't I lose weight? And your brain will tell you why. There's a decision. There's a meaning that you've given it. There's a belief behind it with a decision and evidence. 
well, you can't lose weight because right. Your family is all over is overweight. You can't lose weight. It's in your genes. You can't lose weight because you can't stay in a diet. You can't lose weight because you don't have the willpower. Right. I used to own curves franchises. So I've, I've heard a lot of different things, but what if it had nothing to do with that? What if it was just the, the words that you used to speak to yourself? It was the questions that you used instead. So as we're busting through this false evidence appearing real, we're moving through. I said, I didn't know if I bust through or not. So I guess I, I guess I do believe we bust through fears right? at an unconscious subconscious level. This is the greatest thing about coaching, right? You get to like unpack your own stuff while you're chatting. We're moving these different mountains, right? We get to look at things through an, a, a new lens. And we've only just begun today with this one powerful thing, which is start asking different questions, being open to what kinds of questions would be more empowering. What kinds of questions you, and that's a question you can ask yourself. What kinds of questions do I need to ask myself so that I can have a different result? What kinds of questions do I need to ask myself so that I can have different results? Your brain will kick in your reticular activating system you will be inspired. You'll see things like I, when I ask, start asking questions like that, I see things all the time, like come through Facebook or whatever. Right. All right. Well, let's head into our third break again. Thank you so much for joining me here at Inspired Choices Network. My name is Ranchelle and you are listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Afterwards, we're going to tie this all together. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach, Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on inspiredchoicesnetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back again. My name is Ranchelle and welcome to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. So before this last break, um, I was talking about at the very first, your brain's a goal achieving machine. Um, we talked about this last piece, a belief is just a decision. Very beginning, we talked about, right, your brain is wired for, uh, for survival and it's not wired to thrive. Moving the mountain of fear is really all about the questions that you ask. It is that simple and that complicated and that complex all at once, right? When we ask questions that are that go, uh, require us to go back into our past, we're gonna recollect all of the reasons why we can't or haven't done things, right? We're gonna go back into some of the belief systems, maybe even unconsciously, as I shared with you my story about coming out of the, wash, or the washroom, the change room with uh, tights and no pants or no skirt. Um, that was very, a very unconscious. I didn't even realize that was there. I mean, I've, um, it wasn't a new memory, but the effect of that memory was more profound this time when I realized how it was affecting me today at the age of 50s or something or other in you know, my 50s, right? So I want to talk about, we were talking about the questions, like, and asking different questions. And I know that I spend a lot of time on that because it really is so very important. Um, because we as human beings, we go into action so much. Like, what do I need to do, right? Um, I, I'm, this is happening, what do I need to do? I want this thing, what do I need to do, right? I want more clients, what do I need to do? I want to lose weight, what do I, what do I need to do? I want an, an, uh, more intimacy with my partner, what do I need to do? And we really miss out on that, the result, the doingness, the, the, that's the action, but the result of the action is linked all the way back to the belief, the belief that we have. 
And a lot of times these are unconscious beliefs and they're all connected. You know, one of the things that I've been exploring um, and uh, really excited, I'll be launching a new program called the Sacred Art of Business. And so one of the things I've been exploring is the connection between the energy of um, money and, and the connection, the energy of how we do int intimacy uh, and how we do even from a sexual place, a sexual energy as well, and the connection between the two. And for the longest time, I've, I've seen the connection, but I just couldn't verbalize it. But if you think about like why, so why, uh, why can't, oh, how do I make people buy, right? Or why can't I sell my program, okay? That's a, I, I hear that all the time. <clears throat> if we go back into what's the belief, and I had talked about this, what's the belief behind sales and salespeople, but even at a deeper level, what happens when people say no to you? How do you feel? Like, do you get off the phone and go, yes, that was my fifth no of the day. I can't wait to get the sixth, right? Or do you go into, no one loves me, right? I suck. I don't know this marketing thing. Sales is hard. Like, I know where I went for the longest time, right? And I like sales. <laughs> so, I mean, we do that. Now, stick with me. When we make a pass at somebody and they say no, do you go into, yes, that was my fourth no of the day, <laughs> my first no of the day, I can't wait for the next one, or do you go into, what's wrong with me, no one loves me, right, the energy of it is the same. Right. And so when we think about from a sales perspective in business and we think, why can't I sell my program? And we're and it, we think it's just, it's tied to and it is it is tied to how what you think about and your belief around sales and salespeople. Chances are, though, I'm pretty sure it's attached to abandonment and rejection. A lot of us don't like to hear no. A lot of us give a meaning to the word no. What meaning do you give to the word no? So as you're moving through, and you're talking about you moving through this mountain of fear, this false evidence appearing real, and we're tying it into these questions that are important that you ask, the questions will lead you to some of your limiting beliefs that you have. And those limiting beliefs allow you to make the decision. A belief is just a decision. I'm going to make a new decision. And then when you make that new decision, you actually apply logic. So there's the, the next piece of it. You apply logic to uh, the belief, the new belief. So in short terms, we have a belief. I'll use mine. I'm not enough, right? I'll use a simple one. I'm not enough. I have lots of evidence of I'm not enough. I can take the opposite belief, I am enough. And then I need to provide evidence to my brain, to my, uh, my brain so that I rewire I am enough into my brain. I can create a new neural network. It's not enough to have an affirmation of I'm enough. And I'm, I'm, I'm an affirmation girl. I have affirmations. I have an affirmation practice but I also understand the science behind the affirmations, right? So we're moving this mountain of fear, ask different questions, understand what the belief is behind it, because then you'll get to the truth of that. You'll make the, aware, make the statement of, oh, a belief is just a decision with evidence. Create a new decision, which will lead you to a new belief add evidence to the new belief. And that evidence piece is important. Affirmations, and maybe you've had that experience. I mean, I was the queen of affirmations when I was in my early 20s, and sometimes they worked and sometimes they didn't. And I used to have a meaning to that. The meaning I used to give it was, ah, Ranchella, you suck. It's not that at all. You don't suck. You just need evidence. You just need some evidence, right? That's what you need. All right. I'm super excited that you decided to join me here. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. Ranchell returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. 
4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold, be brilliant, be you.